This is the brand new revised core set for the Lord of the Rings the card game. I'm really excited about this. I'm actually very familiar with this game, so not only will I do an unboxing for you, I am going to give you a components overview so you can know what all of these components do in the game, which will sort of serve as an introduction to my next video, which will be a full how to play. Uh, so be sure to subscribe to get that tutorial video. I'm also going to be explaining some of the major differences between this brand new core set and the old core sets. And right off the bat, the first major difference here is that the new core set supports one to four players. The old core sets did not have enough threat dials or tokens to get all four players in there, so you'd have to buy multiple core sets, but not now. Now you just get the one box and you've got everything you need. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed. Alright, and here we go. So we start off with two rule books. There is a learn to play guide and then a rules reference. The rules reference is sort of like after you've learned how to play the game, if you just need to look up a single rule, everything is listed alphabetically in this. So just an excellent reference guide. Also a very long reference guide. Uh, this is not the easiest game to play. There's 31 pages of references here. So very cool to have that. Now for the learn to play, they've got a lot of updates here just to the layout. It looks a lot cleaner than it used to, in my opinion. I think they've got a lot of great examples, visuals. Um, I will say that uh, they recommend here starting with some decks that contain every copy of the sphere here, like every copy of the leadership card and two copies of, I think that's Gandalf, that's a terrible idea, in my opinion. The old course that actually had a better balance of the different numbers of the cards, and so these starter decks, I don't think these are going to be great for players. But, you know, in my next video, I'm going to hopefully give kind of some tips on, on how to use this uh, new revised core set and the cards in it. Uh, I will say, though, they have added these two decks, uh, which are dual sphere decks. This is a leadership and spirit deck and then a lore and a tactics deck. From what I've heard, these decks are actually excellent. Um, like they really had someone uh, build these decks well uh, for start players. And so I might actually just start my tutorial with this deck here. I'm not sure yet, I'll actually do some testing there. Um, but for the most part, nothing really has changed. Uh, there are some new campaign rules now. This is new in the game. Um, they've added a campaign to these three quests in the box so that you can play them as a connected story. And you'll carry boons and burdens uh, between the quests. You'll earn these depending on how you perform. Uh, so I'll show you these new components in a bit. And then they've got a campaign log that you can photocopy and uh, use as you play through the campaign to record the heroes that you've used and lots of other things that will happen throughout the campaign. So really nice rulebook. Now, of course, we've also got an ad for a cool game here. Got a lot of punch board for the threat dials, the different tokens. And these are also new. You've got some new denominations for all the different token types. You've got threes and fives, whereas in the old core set, you just had these basic ones, so that, you know, the, the stacks would get rather high. And now these little bits are to put together the threat dials. You need those for that. And we've got four packs of cards. This is a lot of cards. So I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap these and I'm also going to kind of sort them and then show you what all the different card types are. All right, there are a lot of cards in this game. I've separated them all into different types of cards that we have. At the top row are all of the player cards. This is the pile of all of the heroes. You've got 12 heroes to start with, three leadership, which is this symbol down here. This is the sphere of influence of these heroes. The purple sphere is leadership, Aragorn, Theodred, Gloin. Then you've got the tactic sphere in red. This is Gimli, Legolas, and Thalin. The blue sphere is spirit. You've got Eowyn, Eleanor, and Dune here. And the last sphere is lore, which is the green symbol with the book. That's Denethor, Glorfindel, and Barovor. 
There's your 12 heroes to start with. These are the cards that start on the table. They don't start in your deck, so you don't have to draw them. You start on the table with these heroes, and they're going to help you complete quests. These are all of the leadership player cards. This symbol in the upper left corner means this is an ally. So we've got a whole bunch of allies here. This, the symbol up here is for an event, the scroll symbol. These are sort of one-time use cards that you can play almost at any time. Uh, there are some restrictions on when you can play them, uh, but they kind of come in and do one effect and then come out. These, the square symbol is an attachment. This goes onto a character, an ally or a, a hero, and they will do some sort of long-term effect. Here's all of the same types of cards for tactics. You've got lots of allies, lots of events, and a few more attachments for tactics. It focuses a little more heavily on weapons and armor. The spirit sphere. Some allies, but actually fewer allies than most. You've got some excellent events in Spirit, some cancellation type of events that are really, really helpful. Some recursion events, ways to bring back heroes, and a few attachments, and one of the best cards in the game, <laughs> Unexpected Courage. In Lore, you've got plenty of healing and card draw and scrying effects, looking ahead at the encounter deck. Really good allies. The events can be pretty costly, but some really useful ones in there. And some really, really good attachments that are very, very handy. Now this revised core set comes with eight copies of Gandalf. So you're allowed to put three copies of any card in your deck. They come with eight so that each, you know, if you play four players and each person can have two copies. But every other player card in the revised core set has three copies. That is different. The old core sets had a mixture of some cards had three copies, some had two copies, and some of the best cards, like Unexpected Courage that I mentioned before, the original core set only had one copy of this card. So to get you know, the best deck to build, people had to buy three core sets. It was nuts. So now you've got a full set of three player cards. Um, of every card in this revised core set, so really much better to build decks with. Now these cards right here in the next row, these are brand new. This is brand new content that we have never seen before. Uh, these are the campaign cards that you can use to play all three quests as a connected story. Okay, so this, these, quest, uh, these campaign cards here will kind of give you some new instructions for how to set up the quest that's different uh, than how you would normally set it up. And then on the back, there's a resolution which will tell you what to do, uh, maybe adding some special boon cards or some special burden cards based on how you performed or completing certain conditions in the quest. So all of these though, they are new, but if you have a core set already, Fantasy Flight has said that they will offer these as a free print and play for existing owners of the game, which is just a great move on their part. So. Existing owners don't need to buy this new core set to get this new content. Now these next cards down here are the quest decks. So this core box comes with three quests. The first one is Passage Through Markwood, and you can see the quest marker. Well, first of all, the name is right here, but the quest marker is down here. This Passage Through Markwood is kind of this tree symbol here, and this has four cards in the deck. So this tells the story and it gives you the challenges that you need to overcome in order to win the game. So there's Passage Through Mirkwood. This is Journey Along the Anduin, which is one of my favorite quests in the game. That's the quest symbol. And there's, of course, the name, same as before. This is Escape from Dol Guldur, uh, which is the hardest quest in the box by far. Um, just a tip, this is not designed for solo players. This single quest, you should not try to attempt this if you're new to the game with just one deck. Uh, the more players you add, the easier this quest gets. So you can try playing two-handed, like controlling two decks uh, to try to face this quest. Um, but just, you know, don't beat your head against this. If you lose, don't worry about it. It's extremely difficult with this kind of card pool here. Now these last seven decks here are the encounter sets. Each encounter set is labeled with a symbol here in the corner that designates which cards belong in this set. So you can see 
all these have the same icon. So when you're building an encounter deck, you just check out the quest, the first quest card, and it will tell you, use these three encounter sets. It's the spider symbol, the skull, or the orc symbol, and then this tree symbol. So that's this deck, this deck, and this deck. So once I grab all three of these encounter symbols, I shuffle these up together, and that makes the quest deck for this scenario, for this quest. So every quest is gonna have its own unique set of encounter cards that you're gonna to need to put together for that quest to work. I should also mention that the game does come with this much nicer insert uh, than the old one, uh, which is just a bunch of cardboard. So this actually has a structure to be able to hold the cards. So yeah, that took up just over half of this first container over here. Uh, I would say that these two containers are actually great size for decks. So you could build two decks and just keep them in these compartments. Or I guess you could keep all the tokens and threat dials in uh, these component compartments too. But I do like that they have a little uh, finger grab area here to make it easier to pull out the cards. And these would easily fit sleeved cards. But overall, I'm really pleased with this revised corset package. It really does... Uh, make it a better entry point for new players. Um, again, I will be doing a how to play video on this very shortly, so be sure to subscribe to get that. I will also put a link to it on the screen once it's out. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I can. Godspeed.